as we continue to feature independence over the years. Today we focus on a special school's concert. The young children celebrated their freedom and independence in song and drama. NTN now invites you to sit back and enjoy as we take you back to the ninth anniversary of St. Lucia's independence. Now we are going to close our eyes, clasp our hands, and say thanks to God while our three managers pray with us. Almighty God, we praise and we thank you as we gather here this morning. We praise and we thank you for the beautiful sunshine we praise and we thank you for the sea. We praise and we thank you for each other. And more than ever, Father, we praise and we thank you for St. Lucia. We praise and we thank you for this land that you have made our own. We praise and we thank you as this nation, our nation, our country, our island, celebrates its ninth anniversary of independence. We praise and we thank you that you have made us a St. Lucian people, a people who can praise and worship you as ourselves, a people who are not ashamed of who we are, of what we have done, and of where we are going. We ask you, Father, as we celebrate nine years of independence, to continue guiding us as you've guided us these past years, to continue supporting us as you've supported us these past years, to continue letting these children, the future of this nation, grow to be the kind of citizens that you, Father, would be proud of. And we offer all these prayers, Father, and all these thanksgiving in the name of your Son, Jesus, our Savior, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus, friend of little children, we thank you for our island home. We thank you for all our schools gathered together here this morning. We thank you for all the true and wonderful things we are learning, for all our parents and teachers, and for all true men and women in our land and in other lands whose example we can follow. You are the truth. 
come to live in our homes and in our hearts and make us ashamed to say an untrue word or to do a dishonest act. Forgive us that we have not always been honest over our work or in our games. Make us now and always true and loyal citizens and servants of our God and country. We offer this prayer in your name, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Master, our Savior and our Guide. Amen. Father in heaven, we thank you for this privilege of coming to you. And we thank you that we can come to you whenever we want to, wherever we want to, and uh, however we want to. We thank you for all your wonderful blessings to us, for the beauty of our land, and in particular, for the beauty expressed in your people, and, in more, and more particularly, expressed in the beauty of these little ones here gathered. We ask you, Lord, to bless them, protect and safeguard their lives from all that would hurt and destroy the joy and the beauty you have made them with. We ask you, Lord, to encourage them to obey your will. Help them to come to realize, Lord, that it is in serving you and obeying you that the prosperity of their country and the happiness of every individual lies. Lord, today as they are gathered here, look on them with mercy and love. Keep them ever in your protective arms. Bless them and provide for their every need. And this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. Now we're going to move straight into our program. Presentations by the school. Would the choir please come across here? This morning we are decided to try and bring a bit of unity into the program. We have the schools joining together in various activities for presentation. The theme is unity one with another. And the children are going to sing for you sometime. This says sometime, you don't know when, someone, you don't know whom, somewhere, you don't know where, but sometime we hope unity will take place. <laughs>
by Rose of Row by Rose. Now we have some creative dance. Go on. This is going to be done between the Ava Maria and Thank you, children. Now we're going to have some choral speech on unity. This is coming from the Anglicans and the Methodists. Unity. Thank you. 
Way for you. Everybody ready? I can't hear you. Good. Now please look at the stick and sing along with it.
children, while we invite our guests to come and interact among you, we are going to ask those of you standing in the sun to walk quickly and go into the pavilion across there. Education officers, reverend managers, principals, past and present, teachers, and the children. Happy Independence Day to you, children. This morning, as we have gathered here, we have come to celebrate the ninth Independence Day of our island. And we are happy to celebrate. I am going to read a few words from poems that tell us about celebration. When I have read one of them, I will explain, and then I'm going to ask you some questions. So you've got to listen carefully in order to answer the questions I ask you. The first poem I'm going to read is called The Rainbow. It was written by William Wordsworth. You have seen a rainbow before. I hope everybody has seen one. So you know what it is all about. My heart leaps up when I behold a rainbow in the sky. So was it when my life began. So is it now I am a man. 
So be it when I shall grow old or let me die. The child is father of the man and I could wish my days to be bound each to each by natural piety. What this is saying is that the rainbow is so beautiful, but everybody who is bored finds the rainbow already there. And the rainbow be, remains there all the time that the person grows up and becomes an adult. And the poet is saying, I believe and I hope that when I would have died, the rainbow will still be there because it is such a beautiful thing. I hope it will be there for everybody to see it and to celebrate it. Because the word natural piety means of giving thanks and celebrating. And the poem said something else. It said, the child is father of the man. I don't know if you will remember this, but let's say it together. The child is father of the man. Let me hear you say it. The child is the that again. Now, some people didn't quite hear, so they're not speaking up. But I want you to speak up. You talk up loud and say it. The child is father of the man. That's very good. Now, give yourself a clap because you're so good. What that means is saying that before everybody becomes a grown-up, the person has to be a child. Sometimes you don't know and you don't understand why your mommy or your daddy find out what you have done and why you have done it. It is because your mommy was a child before and your daddy was a child and your teacher was a child. Even I too was a child. So the child is there before the person becomes a man or a woman. It says something else too. It is while you are young as you are today that you learn all of the things you need to know so that you can do the best that you possibly can when you become a man or a woman. It is saying something else too, that we the grown-ups must teach the children everything that is possible for us to teach them because when we the old people die, the children will be the men and women of this nation. Now, another poet called John Keats put it in another way. He wrote a poem of celebration to a Grecian urn. And in writing that poem and celebrating it, instead of saying the child is father of the man, he said, beauty is truth, truth is beauty. That is all you know on earth, and that is all you need to know. I'm going to go over the little part that you need to know. 
It says, beauty is truth, and truth is beauty. You get that? So let's say it together if you have it. Beauty is truth, and truth is beauty. Let's say that again. Beauty is truth, and truth is beauty. And some people are not talking up yet because they have not heard. We are learning another one. Beauty is truth, and truth is beauty. Let's hear you loud enough. Now, he was saying so about an urn, and the word urn is spelled U-R-N, urn. And an urn is almost like a large jar that has a bottom, that has a base, something that is a bit tall, like a stem for you to put on the table. And it is round, and it has a cover. Now an urn used to be used long ago to put the ashes of anybody who died and was cremated. Now the word cremated is a big word, but if you listen nowadays to the death announcements on the radio, I want you to listen and you will hear some of the undertakers saying that the body can be cremated. That means instead of burying the person in a coffin, they put the person through an oven and burn up the person's body. When an urn is made to keep tea or coffee hot, or some people just have them nowadays for decoration, they put the urn in a corner in the drawing room or the sitting room or the living room, whichever your mother chooses to call it. But an urn is beautiful. And it is beautiful because when it is made, it is highly polished and then they put a painting on the urn. They put a beautiful painting as though the person wanted to say everything that was beautiful in the life of the person who made it or who is buying it or who had died. Now, the poem is about the urn and Keats says, beauty is truth and truth is beauty, that is all you know on earth, and that is all you need to know. Now let us suppose that you were an urn. You can think of yourself as being an urn, as a big vase that has a stem and very beautifully decorated, and with a little cover, and you're on a nice table in the corner of the living room, or the sitting room, or the drawing room. Remember that although you are there, you are good for something. You are good for something because you are good, because you are useful, and because you are beautiful. Now I'm going to ask you a question. If you look at yourself, as we looked at the rainbow, as we looked at the urn, are you very beautiful? Are you beautiful? I cannot hear you. Are you sure that you are beautiful? Very good for you. Now suppose we say that our island is an urn. We are saying something about the island. Are we saying something good about it or something bad? I didn't hear you. Yes, 
Now, what is the name of your island? What are you celebrating about your island today? Okay, what does the island have in it so that you can celebrate the island? All right, now let me help you with this one. The island itself is very beautiful and it has beautiful people. That's what we are celebrating. Our island is beautiful and it has beautiful people. Now we know the island is beautiful and we know that the people make the island beautiful. But what I want you to think about today is whether our island has a good name as being very beautiful. We know that we call the island St. Lucia. Do you know of other names that the island had? You, you don't know of any other name? But I want to know of another name, another name that the island has. Helen of the West. Our island is also called Helen of the West. Let's hear that. Our island, our island is also called the Helen of the West. Now, but some people want to know whether the island has a good name. It's beautiful, the people are beautiful, but some people don't really like St. Lucia. Some of them will think that we are bad. You know, sometimes we think so ourselves because we do wrong things. But when we say that beauty is truth, and truth is beauty, we want to be able to say that what we say about our island is the truth and that the island is beautiful. Now, how will we manage to say that everything we say about our island is the truth? For us to have the truth, everybody in the island must be honest. The people must be truthful. They must be hard-working people. You know, we like fat, but fat is not enough. We have to be very hard-working people. Are you very hard-working? I cannot hear you. Um, I'm asking the question again. Some people are not listening. Are you a very hard-working pupil in your school? Ah, some people do, are not very hard-working because they're not saying yes. All you have to say is yes if you are hard-working. I'm going to ask the question again. Are you hard-working? Yes. All right. Well, everybody in the island must be hard-working. And we must be a healthy people. That means we have to be strong. We have to look after our health. And we must be pure people. Pure is like when you have water. And it's beautiful and crystal clear without any little bit of thing in it. And the people must be pleasant. They must be nice. And they must be kind loving and forgiving. Now that is asking a lot of the people to do that. But then we can do it if we unite. You know our theme is unity. And if we unite, if we work together with one another, then we can learn all of these good things about our island and then we can be good men and women and then we can say that we live in a beautiful island and we can celebrate this island like the mountains, like the 
rainbow, the mountains, the valleys, and like the urn that we spoke about, with all the paintings of everything beautiful. Now, you know, when you have talk a lot, like we talk a lot this morning, I talk to you a lot, we tend to forget. It is just like when Jesus talked a lot to people, they were going to forget what he said to them. Because there were so many things that he tried to tell them. And he said, look, I don't want you to forget. I don't want you to forget. Now, if for you not to forget, you say what I tell you in two sentences. He says, all I'm telling you people is love the Lord thy God with your whole heart, with all thy mind, with all thy soul, and with all thy strength. And the second thing is, love your neighbor as yourself. Do you know these two commandments? Just say yes or no. Do you know these two commandments? Yes! All right. Those of you who don't know, your teacher will teach you these two. Because Jesus said, if you remember these two, you will remember everything that I have told you. In the same way, I am going to sum up everything that I have told you this morning. And we are going to sum it up in two sentences. Just two. Two phrases we are using to say what we have said there this morning. The first one is, the child is father of the man. Let's say that. The child is father of the man. That again. The child is father of the man. I, I didn't hear the children behind me. So I want to hear them. Say it again. The child. The child. That's again. The child. So how many how many things are these? How many? One. One. So we remember this one. Say the first one. The child. And now we are going to remember the second. Beauty is truth, and truth is beauty. Let's hear that one. That again. Now we are going to try to see if we know both of them. We are going to try to see if we know both of them. Let's say the first one. And the second one. Give yourself a clap for remembering. Very good for you. And let's say again, Happy Independence Day to St. Lucia. Let's say that. Happy Independence Day. Okay, and let's clap for St. Lucia. for listening. Thank you, very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Gill. When we
students of the Ave Maria, Anglican, Methodist, and RC Boys Primary Schools celebrating St. Lucia's ninth anniversary of independence. I do hope you enjoyed that segment of independence over the years. Be sure to join us for another program. Thank you.